Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your entrepreneurship tutor, Professor Henry Buisa of Joma Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology in Kenya. Now, this is part three of translated Buku sayings that every business person, and for this one, every parent must know. Engila sevolela okenda. The footpath does not tell the traveler what lies ahead. Engila sevolela okenda. When you walk along a footpath or any way, road, it will not tell you what lies there ahead. That's the meaning of that saying. Now, this Buku's proverb is about the uncertainties of life. It implies that truth is only arrived at by walking the journey to its full conclusion. Just like walking down a path that your enemies might have traveled on just before you did, and now they wait to waylay you, so is life. In similar vein, the opportunity of your life is just ahead only if you kept on walking. The Bukusu used this saying in a variety of situations. One, to console someone who has made a misfortune and is being unduly hard on themselves. Two, to encourage one going through a period of life of great difficulty, urging them to keep on keeping on because the next turn they take might be one that leads to an upturn in their fortune. Three, in warning the proud that pride comes before a fall and there's no telling when their balloon will deflate. And to educate one embarking on a journey such as pregnancy to prepare for the worst even if they hope for the best. Yes. And now we want to look at real situation that can translate can be translated into this saying Engila Sevoli Laokenda the path you trod will not tell you what lies ahead. Now here is a real story of a street boy in Nairobi, Kenya, who had given up about school and a woman who had little hope of healing. A child from the slums, John Tuo, like many poor children, came up to cars on the road and asked for alms. He had no relatives, and in the streets of the city, he had to survive on his own. Not all drivers reacted kindly, but the boy was used to it. One day, he came up to a car to ask for money as usual, but what he saw inside the car just dazzled him. The driver was a woman. She was sitting with numerous tubes attached to her body, and they were connected to large cylinders. In the car, there was also a device of unknown purpose. Seeing this terrible, unexpected picture, John decided to ask why the woman had these tubes attached to her and why she was carrying huge balloons. The driver was Gladys Kumande. She was having treatment because she had problems with her lungs. To continue living, she had to move with oxygen cylinders and a generator all the time. Outside the car, the woman used a wheelchair to which breathing equipment was also attached and it allowed her to survive. She told John about everything and showed him all the equipment in her car. The boy was so shocked by her story that he burst into tears. John suddenly realized that there were even more terrible difficulties than his own. After all, when one loses their health, nothing else is important. He burst into tears at the thought that he could do nothing to help this unhappy woman. Not knowing what to do, he offered Gladys all the coins he had collected during the day. The boy was aware of the small amount of this money, but he really wanted to help in some way. Gladys tried to calm John down by holding his hand. Having seen a boy crying by a car, a passerby came and asked what had happened. When he realized what had happened, he took several pictures and posted them on the internet with a story below. And then the kindness of the little Kenyan boy shocked many people and caused a response in their hearts. Only a few days passed and the images became viral. They were on social media around the world and created a real phenomenon that completely changed the lives of the two unhappy people, Gladys and John. Thousands of people were able to collect about $80,000 via the internet. 
they helped Gladys go to India for treatment. The woman, who was only 32 years old, managed to improve her health. Stormy discussions on social media influenced the fate of John. He was adopted and his new mother was a wonderful, cheerful woman. She took the boy out of the street and gave him a home. Now he studies at school, lives in a good house, and most importantly, has a loving mother. Yes, this boy's path in the streets never told him what lay ahead. The woman also on the street never, the street path never told her what lay there ahead. Again, Angela Sevolela Okenda. Now, his meat roasting business path never told him that one day he will be visited by the president of the country and give the business a new name and patronage. Let's listen. How would you feel if the president visited your business premises for a bite of Nyamachoma, not once, but twice? Well, this is how a businessman, Peter Mwangi, at the famous Kenyatta market is feeling after President Uhuru Kenyatta made an impromptu visit to enjoy Nyamachoma while on a political tour to popularize Azimio La Umoja. The Nyamachoma joint has now gained popularity with his business fortunes, getting a major boost. <laughs> Located opposite Bagadi Hospital at Nairobi's Kenyatta Market is Peter Mwangi's Nyamachoma base. Business is buzzing as it's the norm here. Mwangi, who has been operating here close to four decades, has become a popular man. This is courtesy of an impromptu visit by President Uhuru on Wednesday. He is a happy man who can't hide his joy. President and now his base has been christened as Ikulundogo, loosely translated to mean a small state house. This, with photos of every visit, put on the wall as a sense of pride. Yes, his path of meat roasting never told him that one day the president will come. Now, What's the entrepreneurial aspect of the saying? Let's go beyond Bukusu land. Look at similar ones. Expect the best. Plan for the worst. And prepare to be surprised. That is Dennis Whiteley. It is far better to foresee, even without certainty, than not to foresee at all. Henry Poincare. Now, as a parent or a teacher, you may be urging kids to pursue higher education to get good wage employment and earn a good salary. But the truth is that Angela Sevolela Okenda, the road does not tell the traveler what lies ahead. The educational path will not guarantee wage employment. It may therefore be wise to be prepared or to prepare the kids for any eventuality in life. Prepare them for both wage and self-employment. Even those who get wage employment will eventually retire and want to start an own business. If your kid does not pursue higher education, he or she may branch into entrepreneurship early. Yes, risk, proverbs. Entrepreneurs are known for their daring and risk-taking abilities, with the risk defined as exposure to loss. But much as entrepreneurs are risk lovers, they will not jump blindly into each and every risk situation. They will assess the risk and think about the outcomes before they dive in. Risk is an entrepreneurial characteristic which people can develop. Let's have some risk quotes. That is Muhammad Ali. He says, who, he who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. An anonymous says, if you don't take risks, you will always work for someone who does. And yet another one, this is Mark Zuckerberg. 
the biggest risk is not taking any risk. And of course, another one here, the greatest risk in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing, and becomes nothing. And of course, yet another one, Ambani, Dirubai Ambani, true entrepreneurship comes only from risk-taking. Yes. And the Linda says, if you are taking a risk, what you are really saying is, I believe in tomorrow and I will be part of it. More, everyone can tell you the risk. An entrepreneur can only see rewards. And another anonymous, take risks. If you win, you'll be happy. If you lose, you'll be wise. And Buisa, myself, I positively look at risk. And I acronymize the word risk, R-I-S-K. Risk means rewards inherent in self-confidence and keenness. Be self-confident and be keen to look at the opportunities. There are rewards in there. Try it. Now, research has shown that games are essential for healthy development in early childhood and beyond. Play, let children practice what they know and also what they don't. It allows them to experiment through trial and error, find solutions to problems, work out the best strategies and build new confidence in skills. Yes, plow, rather, play allows children to use their creativity while developing their imagination dexterity, and physical, cognitive, and emotional strength. Play is important to health brain development. It is through play that children at a very early age engage and interact with the world around them. Let's watch this. Look at this. Village children in Kenya enjoying running around energy developing their psychomotor activities competing playing what are they learning yes we allow our children to play. We have always done. I did so when I was a child. But did we know what we are gaining by playing? Yes. Watch these children somewhere in a Kenyan village play and think for yourself. Can we use situations like this? To teach our children entrepreneurship can we develop entrepreneurial games so as they play they start developing entrepreneurial characteristics yes just watch it every child likes to play not only in Africa globally and here they are, passing their time. Yes. When they go back home, they'll sleep very tightly. The body has worked. When they relax, they'll relax very well. But watch it, this is mainly just physique. Yes, there must be some lesson in life. But by and large, they just enjoy 
developing their psychomotor domains, physique, and so on and so forth. It's like an elimination game and you really get who is the strongest yes so psychological satisfaction who is going to fall last or stay on the ground last yes there they are the winner we have it Can we use such a games to develop talent? As a parent, what talent are you seeing here? How can it be developed further? Are these future artists? Or do you just leave them out there? Let them play. What can we learn from this? How can we develop our kids? The talking entrepreneurship. This creativity. Can we teach innovativeness here? Competition. Is this just a wasted competition? Can they learn anything out of this? Yes. Now, watch these ones. These ones are playing what you call ring, to ring toss. You can see they seem to be enjoying it. But they're just doing it for fun we can actually convert this type of enjoyment yes enjoyment. these kids are playing ring toss yes this is but they're just doing it for fun it can be as it looks can we use this game the ring toss to teach risk characteristics of risk taking as required by entrepreneurship so let's see how we can convert this into character building entrepreneurial character building ring toss yes and now let's watch this yes ring toss games can be bought you can buy them in a supermarket the children's toys give them to your kids there they are there they are enjoying taking them out yes ring toes games and what you are doing is you are making them assemble them like themselves yes and that is awesome. buy the ring toes game in the supermarket so make the kids assemble them they are learning and then they should start playing it assembling is also gainful like we said when they play 
they are awarding marks. Look, they are assembling them, the rainforest the, the themselves. They have done it. So they have responsibility, a teach most of responsibility, you know, and creativity. And there they are. They have now started, you know, playing the, the game. And as we say, this game, you make it. This is a game we can use to develop risk, the risk characteristics in an entrepreneur. And therefore, let our kids grow with some entrepreneurial characteristics. Risk under the words, but the kids are also enjoying, you know, psychomotor, you know, energy, you know, physical, physique, and all that. But they are growing up, learning entrepreneurship through games. Yes. Really, you don't need to buy all the you know, ring toss games. You can do them at home. Let's look at this. You can actually make your own ring toss material at home. Yes. Let's see. Let's start. With your bottles, waste bottles, and there uh, can be beer bottles, anything, cardboard. They just using a plate there to make a cycle on our cardboard. Big plate, smaller, small plate, make cycle out there. come you can make as many as you want those cycles and the smaller cycles and then cut it off just use simple scissors cut off and there you are you have your ring you can make it stronger if you want Add on something to make it stronger and more stable. You know, decorate it if you want. You know, so that the kids will enjoy those colors. Right? What we want is to make a ring that we can toss into the bottles that we saw. In other words, you really don't need to go to buy expensive material. So there we are. We have our rings and our bottles. Now you see, we're now already doing our game, ring door, ring toss game. There we are. So don't try to be too expensive yes these are some materials that you can use you know bottles water bottles whichever bottles indeed even in rural africa you know those are sisal banana waste you're doing it yourself you don't have to worry about buying the ring toss game in the supermarket and now, instead of playing for the sake of it, let your kids play for rewards. Real money will be good for entrepreneurship development. Let's see. Hi, I'm going to explain the rope ring, ring toss game. When you play it, you're going to get five uh, rope rings. And the purpose of the game is to get um, each ring on to from the lowest to highest value as marked. So you got to get on the 5, then the 10, then the 15, then the 20, then the 25 from the distance that's required. If you do that, that level would be complete. So originally, the scorecard, the uh, interactive card, indicates that level 1 is from three, 3 feet 
and six feet to nine feet, but I was finding that that is way too difficult. So I've made it from two feet, four feet, and six feet. Yes. Yes, you can do that. Look, you can have the pegs arranged at closest to you, further and further, and you are going to give rewards, whichever rewards you are, the cheapest one, the first, the most expensive, the farthest one. You can still have just one, uh, one peg, and then you scale off the distance that you'll be uh, doing to throw. So risk. The one who risks most is the one who stands far and will get more rewards. Yes, you can do this to instill the risk taking characteristics and the riskier it is the more rewarding it is and our kids will grow up entrepreneurially there are other games for other characteristics but it is said it is not what you do for your children but what you have taught them to do for themselves that will make them successful human beings that is Anna Landers yes if you enjoyed it, like it, share it, and subscribe to motivate us, bring you more. Do not forget to leave a comment. You could also request for a topic for us to cover, or a saying for us to cover. Thank you for being your fan, our fan. Reach us via that email if you want to. Thank you, and watch this space for more Buku sayings translated into English and with the lessons from them. Thank you.